Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will have a look at book ciphers. I structure this video into three different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the background of the book cipher. Then I will explain how the book cipher actually works. And finally, we will do it in Crypto2. That means we will encrypt and decrypt using the new book cipher component of Crypto2. A book cipher is a cipher where the plain text letters or words are encrypted using a book as a key or other text document instead of a book. And these are used as a kind of lookup table. How this works, we will see later. Clearly, the sender and receiver of encrypted messages can agree to use any book or other publication available to both of them. And this is very important. They have to use exactly the same book or document. Otherwise, the decryption won't work. And a book cipher has a considerable advantage for a spy in enemy territory, since it does not raise suspicion. Like, for instance, the spy is carrying a code book, and when you get caught, of course, then the codebook is identified as some kind of encryption device. But a book like the Bible or some other books is not very suspicious, I think. And the main strength of a book cipher is the key, because only being in possession of the original book or document allows the decryption. Here are three examples for book ciphers in history. The first example and probably the most famous book ciphers are probably the Beale ciphers. <laughs> Calling these book ciphers is probably wrong, since we only know that one of these ciphers is a book cipher. And the Beale ciphers are three encrypted documents. And only one of the documents has been successfully deciphered. And it has been deciphered using a copy of the United States Declaration of Independence as a key. And the two other messages are still unsolved, and it's unclear how these, or even if these, were encrypted. Or maybe these are only a hoax. And here on the right side, you see a cover of the so-called Beale Papers, the publication from which we know the Beale ciphers. My second example for a book cipher is the so-called Arnold cipher, which was a book cipher used by John Andrew and Benedict Arnold in 1780 during the American Revolutionary War. And the book they used as a key to for the cipher was either the Commentaries on the Laws of England by William Blackstone or Nathan Bailey's Dictionary. And the cipher consisted of a series of three numbers separated by periods. For example, like this, you have page number, period, and line number, period, and word number. And my third and last example for book ciphers or the usage of book ciphers is a Cicada 3301 online puzzle series. And this also contained book ciphers. Here on the right side, you can see the logo of the online puzzle series, Cicada 3301. Now let's have a look how book ciphers actually work. At first, sender and receiver, of course, have to agree on the exact same book. Book here can also be any text document, but of course they both have to have the same document. Otherwise the encryption works, but the decryption won't. Then they also have to agree on an encoding scheme. What do I mean with encoding scheme? We have two different encoding schemes. The first one is to encode only single letters, or the second one is to encode complete words. How these work, we will see later. And also they need to know what is encoded. For instance, you could encode the page, the line, but you can also skip these and only encode the word. But the word is the thing that we always have to encode, as you will see later. And in the following, we have a look at both of these schemes, the single letters and the complete word scheme. At first, the single letter scheme. How does this work? Here on the right side, I have a text document and we will use this text document as a key. And you can see that I added the line numbers on the left side of the text document. And to encrypt letters, we first take a random word from the book, which starts with the plain text letter that we want to encrypt. And then we write down the position of the word 
into the ciphertext. For example, as we did here. We want to encrypt the text hello world. So we first encrypt the H. We search for a word starting with H in our document. We count the position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and we write down 6. And the decryptor, of course, then reads the 6 here. He counts also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's human and knows our first letter is H. The same with the E. We have the 37th position here. This is equal. And then the L here is the 100th position. The L is the 42nd position. And the O is the 56th position. And we continue encrypting our text using this document here. Then we have another way of encrypting using the same document. And that is write the line number and position of the word in the particular line in the ciphertext. How does this work? Again, we want to encrypt hello world. And we first need to encrypt the H. We search for a word that starts with H. For instance, the word hold here. This is in the ninth line. So we first write 09. And then this is the one, two, three, fourth word of the line. And we write the 04. Same we do, for instance, with the E. We search for a word that starts with an E. In this case, it's earth. Earth is in the fourth line of the text, so we write a 0, 4, and it's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th word, so we write 0, 8. And we continue doing so until we have encrypted the complete text. Clearly, with a real book, we could also prepend the page number. So you would have 0, 1 for the first page, 0, 9 for the ninth line, and 0, 4 for the fourth word. And we would continue doing so with different pages, lines, and words. Now let's have a look at the complete word scheme. What does this mean? Complete word scheme means instead of encrypting single letters, we encrypt complete words. Clearly, we can only encrypt words with this text here that appear in the text. And we do so by taking a random word from the book, which is the same word as the one we want to encrypt. And then we write the position of the word into the ciphertext. For example, we want to encrypt human liberty. So we search in our text the word human. And when we find it at different positions, we take one of the positions and write this into our text. In this case, we have the six because human is the sixth word here. And then liberty is the 101st word here. So we write 101st. And clearly, someone who wants to decrypt this searches for these words in these positions like six. We search for the sixth word and write human and for the 101st word and write liberty. Of course, we can also encode the line number and position of the word as we did before with single letters. And in this uh, case, we have again human liberty. But here we write 0106. That means first line, six word. And for the liberty, we write 12 and 4 because 12th line and 4th word. And clearly, with the real book, we could also again prepend the page numbers. And as I already said, if the word is not in the book, we cannot encrypt it. Now that we know how book ciphers work, let's encrypt and decrypt using the book cipher component that we have created for Crypto 2. I'm here now in Crypto 2 in the current nightly build 93901. And I want to show you how you can encrypt and decrypt using the book cipher. And to do so in the template section, I search for book cipher or for book. And we have two different workspaces, one with single letter encoding and one with complete word encoding. I start with the single letter encoding. What can we see here? I am probably in the way of our key. Our key here is the Declaration of Independence of the United States. Then here on the top, we have our plain text, Hello World. This is a test of the book cipher component of CT2. And we have two book cipher components, one for encryption, one for decryption, then a cipher text text output and a decrypted plain text text output. So what happens when I press play? Our text here is encrypted using the Declaration of Independence. So the component writes the word numbers or word offsets, which then are used for the letters. For instance, here we have the H and the 
374th word obviously starts with an H, then we have the E, L, L, and so on. And of course, in the decryption process with the second book cipher component, this process is reversed. We have hello world, this is a test, and so on. This is how we can encrypt and decrypt. And if we, or when we restart the workspace here, you see that these numbers change because we have different words starting with the same letters and every time a random selection is made by the book cipher component. Let's have a look at the settings here. And in the settings, you can see the action, encryption or decryption. And then we have the encoding mode, first letter or complete word. I will skip this here because we have another workspace for complete words. And then we have the encoding style. We have digits, that is what we do right now. And you can select what you want to encode. For instance, I want to encode the lines because we have lines here. We have no pages, it's only one page. And you can define how many digits we want to use for line encoding and word encoding. I will do 2-2. Two, two. And when I restart this here, clearly we cannot decrypt because this component has to be set or has to have the same settings. So we also say here uh, encode lines and then 2-2. Two, two. And when I restart this, it can decrypt our text. And we can see here, this is the 15th line with the first word. Then we have the 45th line with the eighth word and so on. You can also change this here, the encoding style to symbol separated numbers. And here again, to symbol separated numbers. And then you can see that we have the numbers here separated by a dot or a full stop. And of course we have to do the same here. Uh, okay, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we can encrypt and decrypt. Then we can change the full stop, for instance, to a comma and the full stop to a comma, and it still works. Now let's have a look at the other workspace that we created for encryption of complete words. And in this workspace, we have as a key Alice in Wonderland, the complete book. And what I also did that you can see here is I added a page separator, and this is a new page separator here. When I now press play, you can see that we have the rabbit went into the queen's house and so on. This is encrypted to very large numbers or groups of digits. And this is then decrypted again using the second book cipher component. How does this work? The pages here are encoded in two digits. Then we have the line with three digits, and we have the word with three digits. Since I use the new page in the key document here, only very rarely, only <laughs> in fact, after each chapter, we have a lot of lines per page. Clearly, if you have a, uh, if you would or want to have each page uh, encoded here in the correct way, you have to add this new page after each page of the original book. And clearly with the um, book complete uh, with the complete word encoding, we could change this also to symbol separated and again to symbol separated. And I personally prefer this style of encoding here because you can easily see okay, eighth page, 231st word, a uh, line, and then ninth word. Yeah, and this is how the book cipher component in Crypto 2 really works. It's I think it's a little like a Swiss knife, it has a lot of settings and you can encode or encrypt letters and words as you wish. Yeah, and as I said, this is how this works. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. I first showed you some examples of real book ciphers in history where they actually were used. Then I described how the book cipher works and how with which modes it has and how um, different letters and words can be encoded. And finally, we had a look how we implemented it in Crypto 2. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you like it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, please also do so. This really helps us to grow the channel and also to make Crypto 2 more popular. Finally, if you want to see more of these videos, please hit the bell icon that notifies you then when I upload new videos. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.